What's going on guys, Casual Savage here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I make my thumbnails. Now starting off, I'm going to be using Photoshop. This is what I use to create all my thumbnails. If you don't have Photoshop, then I recommend Pixlr, which is basically Photoshop Online, or use GIMP. So I have it at 1280 by 720 and the first thing I do is open up this pack, which I downloaded from YouTube, it's from Rated LX. As you can see, this is pack 1, a link to this will be in the description. I don't use any other of the folders, I just come to texture stocks and then I select a background that I think will fit in my thumbnail. So for example, this one looks nice, I'm going to drag and drop this onto my Photoshop and I'm just going to size it out so it fits. Now I also forgot to mention that the thumbnail I'm making right now is for tomorrow's video which is a portal effect in Sony Vegas. So you're going to get a sort of a preview and a sneak peek of what to expect. So the next thing I do from here, I'm going to head over to Sony Vegas and open up my edited project file and take a snapshot from that edited version. Now of course I'm using Sony Vegas because that's my normal editing software, but whatever editing software you do, just take a snapshot of something in your video that relates to what you're going to show. Now I'm going to use this one right here and I'm just simply going to save snapshot to file. And I'm going to save this to my desktop and I'm simply going to drag and drop this onto Photoshop like so. Now yes it's taken up our background, now there's a way to counter this, either you just lower the opacity or what I like to do, I change this to soft light. Sometimes I play around with the other settings but soft light is what I usually go for, as you can see this gives us this effect. I'm then going to press Control T to open up the transform tool, I'm going to give it a tilt around the side and make it bigger like this. And that's what it gives us. The next thing, I then go and use Timper's 10k pack or I use Visuals pack. Most of the time I usually combine them so I use both of them. Links to their channels or links to their uh, packs will be in the description as well. And yeah, so as you can see it's a really good editing pack. And what I like to do is come over to the extras and this is what we get from Visuals. This is probably my favourite one, I like to use this a lot so I'm going to drag and drop this onto the thumbnail. It just gives us these little white marks here. And then I like to add some overlays, so basically setting up the background before I add the text. And since it's a portal effect, this one looks pretty good, so I'm going to drag and drop this right in the middle, like so. And if you're wondering what version of Photoshop I'm using, I'm using Photoshop CC. I'm actually going to add this one on, because again, portal effect it gives us this uh, illusion sort of thing. So I'm going to press Ctrl T and let's see how we're going to have this. I'll have it like that. And then I'm going to change this to soft light again, but this time I'm also going to lower the opacity a bit because I don't want this to be too visible. And then I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate it, and then I'm going to bring it to the bottom corner, and then I'm press Ctrl J again and do it to the bottom right corner, and Ctrl J again to bring it to the top right corner. So then this is what we got. It looks pretty messy, but it does turn out good in the end. So at the moment we've added a background, we've added some overlays, we've added this thing in the middle, and then of course we took that snapshot and that is on top as well. Another thing I like to add is half tones. Again, um, I don't like to use all of them. This is probably the main one I use again and I'll probably use it right now just to see what it looks like. So there's nothing wrong with just experimenting. Like right now I don't know what I'm planning to create. I know I'm making a thumbnail for a portal effect but I don't know how the end result will look like. So I just play around with some things that I can use and then we get an end result. So again, I'm going to put this to soft light and I'm actually going to put this below all the other layers and I'm going to turn this opacity down and then I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate this, Ctrl T, I'm going to hold Shift and Alt so it swaps sides like that and keeping it online, I'm simply going to drag this to the other side, just like that. So now we get these circles as you can see, it just frames out or circles out the edges and then I'm going to come back to visuals again and it looks like I'm just going to use his for this one. I'm going to find something else that I like to use from him which is this one right here. As you can see it darkens the edges so I'm going to drag and drop this right on top and I'll put this above everything else and there we go. As you can see it darkens the edges so if I take this off that's before and that's after. So as you can see I've just added these things at the bottom and again it's from visuals pack, it's right here under the flares and lights. So again you can use that as well. And then I'm also going to add a light on top, as you can see visuals again has this right there. So I'm going to drag and drop this on top and it gives us this light. 
And you can see if I take this off, that's before and that's after. And I'm also going to have the text underneath this light so then it gives it more of a shining te or shining look. So now I'm going to create a new layer and now I'm going to get onto the actual text. So text tool or type tool, I'm going to drag out this. And of course this is portal effects. So I'm just going to type in portal effects. I'm going to keep this one really simple. That's all it's going to say. But I'm going to bring up the size of portal and then bring up the size of effects just a little bit, not all the way. And then I'm going to stretch effect so it, so it, uh, the E is next to or online with the P and the T is online with the E. But the first thing, as you can see, they're overlapping. So I'm going to highlight effect. I'm going to come to this and here we go, bring it down. And then from here, as you can see, it's this one here. If I just bring this up, I can get them online and spread the letters out. And that's what we're going to get. So if I check that and position this to the center like so, that's what we got. So now I'm going to add some of the gradient to the text. But first of all, um, this black one, as you can see for the edges, I'm going to drag this above to the top just before the light. So it darkens everything else as well. So now what I'm going to do here is come to gradient. Well, first of all, actually, I'm going to add a bevel emboss. I'm going to add a stroke. Now I'm going to add a gradient and we're not going to use this one. Um, for this one, I don't know what color I'm going to use. Maybe I'll go for like an orange to red gradient. So I'm going to start off with close to yellow, but it's going to be an orange like that. Then double click up here, make my way to orange, make my way to a bit more red. And then the final color is going to be a red like that. Then I'm going to delete this one drag this to the end. And then for this, this is how I usually make my gradient text. Uh, I usually have this one set to 70. This one is set to 30. And then it's all spread out and that's the text we get. And then I add a drop shadow. Drop shadow, I don't really have a setup for how I usually have it. I usually play around with the settings most of the time. But as you can see, I have the blend mode to multiply. And yeah, I like to play around with the size because sometimes I want it a bit darker on the outside like right now as you can see I'll have it like that spread uh, sometimes I turn it up so I'm gonna have it like that and um, select OK that is what we've got so far and now I'm gonna make it look a bit better by adding a color corrector now I know I did mention timpers that I also use here and most of the time I swap them but this time I don't think I'm gonna be using timpers but again a link to his pack will be in the description as well so I'm going to come back to visuals and he has the color correctors right here and I like to use his ones all the time. So just press the eye and it shows me what it looks like. And my color is more of an orange. So we'll see what we can get and look at the difference. So I have just gone through and I've added the red one. So I'm going to drag and drop this here. Boom. Automatically it gives us such a nice effect. If I put it below the text, as you can see, we have the text in its own color, but I'm actually going to keep it above. And now we have a white to dark red gradient. And that looks so much better. Um, we can sort of see our image in the background. So the first one we added, if I turn this all the way up, uh, if I change it from soft light, I mean, this image here where the explosion was happening. So again, you can play around if you want it like that. So if I wanted to show more, I'd set it to normal and simply just change the opacity of it and I'll have it like that. And the final thing I'm going to add to just to make this look a bit more better is add some adjustments. Now, this is something I like to add all the time just to see if it's going to look better. But most of the time I go with it. Sometimes I take things off. Now, if you don't see the adjustments tab over here, come to window and select adjustments. Now from adjustments, I follow the order it's in. So brightness and contrast, usually I lower the brightness a bit and turn up the contrast. Then for the levels, Levels, I sometimes select auto. Again, this is optional. This is what you're going to get with auto. If I take this off, that's before, that's with it on. And I'm going to keep it for now. For the curves, I like to just bring this one up, bring this one down. The same thing I do in Sony Vegas when I'm showing you how to do the film effects. It's the exact same type of curve. Then the next thing is exposure. Exposure, I don't really mess with too much. I usually keep that the same. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to delete that layer. 
Next thing is vibrance. Usually I turn it all the way up. As you can see, it gives us more of a vibrant color and looks really nice. Then we have hue and saturation. This is something I use quite a lot and this sometimes can make a really great thumbnail. So as you can see, I'm gonna change the colors and the whole color will change. So you can now experiment to how you want this to look. So I might not keep it red now, I can just change it to something I like. Like the first thing I wanted was an orange. I can go with an orange right here, but I don't think I will. I'll probably stay the same for now. Yeah, I'm gonna stay the same for now. So I'll just set this back to zero. And then of course you can change the saturation if you want to. For me, I'm just gonna turn it up just a tiny bit. And the next thing is color balance, but I don't really change anything else. That is where I go up to, so I start on brightness and contrast and end on hue and saturation. Now, if I take off all the adjustments I've just added, this is what it'll look like. So that's brightness and contrast off straight away. This is without the levels, this is without the curves, this is without vibrance, and this is without the hue and saturation. It makes it look overexposed, like there is a bright light on it, but when we add it on, it makes the text more uh, vibrant and the background just looks nice as well. As you can see, even these particles at the bottom that were orange have now changed to red. And as you can see, the light I added is pretty big, like it's just there and you can see the outline. So it's right here. I'm gonna turn that down, the opacity of it, as you can see, just like that. And I'm gonna press Control T and I'm gonna size it up so it comes over the text, like that. Now you don't need to have this light above all the time. I've sometimes chose the bottom. So if I press Control T and just flip this all the way around, you can see it even looks good at the bottom sometimes. But for this case, I'm gonna turn it back around and have it at the top. And just like that, I've created my thumbnail and that is how I create my thumbnails. Usually spend around 10 to 20 minutes on it. Uh, sometimes quicker, it depends what the video is and it depends uh, if I'm happy with it or not, because sometimes it can take a long time. Now, because I've added so many effects to the picture itself, when I come to File, Save As, I always save mine as a JPEG. Uh, of course, people can pick their own option. I, I think uh, YouTube's upload is JPEG or PNG, so I'm just gonna save it as Untitled for now. As you can see, this is my video, how to edit templates in After Effects. I haven't made the thumbnail to this just yet, but it's not live yet. So if I come to Custom Thumbnail, and just try to upload the one we just created. You'll see at the bottom left, it's got the uploading numbers. Then it's gonna say your file is too large. So the way I counter this, I come to a site called Compressed PNG or Compressed JPEG. Now, as you can see, it only does JPEG folders or files, but I will link this in the description. And if you use any other format, I'll link another link as well. Link another link. I'll link another website. So from here I just upload files, I select my thumbnail. Now yes, I do lose quality when doing this. However, it allows me to upload it to YouTube and it still looks good. So I select download, save it to my desktop, simply come here, try again, upload. And just like that, this is now gonna upload. Just like that. But that's it for this video. Hopefully this has helped you. This was my first tutorial with Facecam. Hopefully you guys liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, and peace.